on Prime Crime. Oh my gosh. It's the shooting captured on real-time audio. And I was like, aim! And I put that front sight right in the center mass and I squeezed, I, I think, I believe two rounds. Was this self-defense or a crime? This sounds and looks like a staged event. Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we do a deeper dive into the most high profile and memorable true crime cases. There are so many stories we cover where we say we wish we could have gotten that on tape. This is one of those times we actually have it. Thank you for calling AT&T Roadside Assistance. This is Maddie. May I have your mobile number to better assist you? A car breaks down. A driver calls for help. Happens all the time across this country, and no one bats an eye. But on October 18th, 2015, in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, this call would become a crucial piece of evidence in a major case. And what's the name on it? Corey Jones. 31-year-old drummer Corey Jones was driving south on the I-95 freeway after finishing up a set with his bandmates. As he's headed south, he begins to have car trouble and pulls off to the side of the road. I'm off uh, the PGA uh, southbound exit. As Jones stays on the line with roadside assistance, little does he or the operator realize what's about to happen. Officer Newman Raja, a seven-year police veteran, had been working an undercover surveillance operation nearby. Raja takes notice of Jones' car and decides to investigate. He would later say he believed the vehicle was abandoned. The mode that he goes into is to drive the wrong way up this ramp park himself diagonally off the corner, the front corner of the car. Now, this is a practice that you would do in a tactical emergency when you've got to block a fleeing vehicle or a potentially fleeing vehicle. To say then that, oh, I thought the car was abandoned, would be inconsistent with his actions, which was to come in hard and aggressive. Dressed in plain clothes and with no badge, Raja parks his unmarked van, gets out, and approaches Jones. What he doesn't know is the next several minutes are being recorded by roadside assistants. Stop. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Raja fires three shots at Jones, then another volley. Gunshots. Corey Jones is shot dead. The shooting would wake up guests at a nearby hotel. Hi, I'm at the, um, what hotel is the name? It's the Double Tree Hotel, and we heard gunshots outside our window. There's a guy walking backwards holding a gun. Now the question is, why did Raja kill Jones? As investigators sort through the evidence, it becomes clear something isn't right. First, there's Raja's phone call to 911 dispatch, which he dials in approximately 33 seconds after firing the last round. I'm back gun right now! 911. Hey, this is Gardens. This is Gardens Alpha One. I just got one down. I just shot one person. I'm at that off ramp right behind Double Tree. Black male. There are inconsistencies in what he's telling that dispatcher versus what we hear and heard on the audio. On the offense, get me some units. I've lost okay. contact with him. I don't know where he is. All right, you got it, buddy. He's claiming, uh, I don't know where Jones went. I lost the line of sight on him. Um, that may appear to be inconsistent. He had put several rounds um, downrange and into into Jones. Where's right, your radio? Yeah. Where's your radio, Raj? My radio's in the van right now. I don't have it with me. I'm on the, right. That's why I'm on the phone. All right, stay on the phone, buddy. Any well-trained police officer, well-meaning police officer, understands the key importance of having that radio on you when you're going to act in a lawful capacity. So number one, the very fact that we're talking about him calling 911 on his cell phone is an indication that something was wrong with his mindset when he approached uh, Jones's vehicle. 
he knew that call was going to be recorded. So he made sure to play up his version of events to create the record that Raja was acting in self-defense. According to Raja, Jones pulled a gun on him. I came out, I saw him come out with a handgun. I gave him commands, I identified myself, and he turned, pointed the gun at me, started running, I shot him. Investigators would find Jones' licensed 380 caliber handgun at the site, but they would conclude that it hadn't been fired and was positioned 125 feet from Jones' body. The autopsy would reveal that Raja shot Jones three times, hitting him in both arms and the fatal shot going through his heart and lungs. Law enforcement officers are trained that the threat is not neutralized until that person has dropped the weapon um, or no longer poses a threat to you and others. So I think there's a common misperception among the public that you could never shoot somebody in the back or shoot a fleeing felon. Um, you can. However, someone who is, has been running away from you has not fired any shots at you, and now you are subsequently, after initially firing rounds, you are continuing to fire someone who is now a distance away or running in the other direction of you, seems inconsistent with a, with a pending or imminent threat. After shooting Jones, it's particularly strange then that Raja barks commands as if he's still alive. Raja, you all right? Yeah, man, I'm good, I'm good. Drop the right. On the off ramp, right? It's very difficult here to not conclude that this sounds and looks like a staged event. If you combine the 33 second delay in calling uh, for help um, with what he verbalized, in that call for help, which is drop the gun, drop the gun. And then by the way, in the same call, he says what? I lost him, I may have lost him, I can't see him. Uh, okay, well, well, which is it? The crime scene afterwards, the gun is found um, and, and has been dropped. So we, these all seem inconsistent to me. Undercover Palm Beach Gardens police officer Newman Raja opened fire on stranded motorist Corey Jones, ultimately killing him. The morning after the incident, Raja conducts a crime scene walkthrough with investigators. Why don't we you want to walk over Can here? you go over here and show us where you were when this happened? He explains that after approaching Jones' vehicle, Jones threatened him with a gun. That's when Raja says he used deadly force in self-defense. And I immediately said, hey man, police, can I help you? And at which point, that's when he jumped back and I saw him draw the gun right at me. Right after I said the word police, and it was just like, Fuck. And I was yelling, I was like, drop the gun, drop the gun. And I saw him go like this. And, and I remember saying to myself, aim. I still remember, and I was like, aim. And I put that front sight right in the center mass, and I squeezed, I, I think, I believe, two rounds. Okay. And I saw him While we've got audio of what transpired, we don't have video of what Corey Jones did or did not do inside that car. We don't know at what point Officer Raja became aware that Jones had a gun. We don't know what Jones did with that gun. We don't know if Jones pointed it at Raja um, and when he may have pointed it at Raja. So there is room in this for some form of self-defense argument. And it just immediately is like positive. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, your family flashed in front of you, your kids flashed in front of you, and you're just like, F and it's just, and just, and I immediately just shouted, drop the gun, and, sorry. And it's, it's like, take a deep, take yep. a deep breath, let's do this, mm -hmm. okay? There clearly is, are, are signs of very typical stress. Um, likely, Officer Raja has, has been sleepless. Um, he is experiencing the trauma of a very traumatic incident and there's evidence of that where he breaks down briefly emotionally he's he's very passionate about what happened and that's very very common um but i i sense a an overemphasis on certain facts that that may be designed to help officer raja and his story because you could clearly argue that he is lying during that recap with the detectives jumped on i immediately got out of the van and he's like i'm okay i'm okay man and at which point I said, hey man, police, can I help you? And second I said, police, he jumped back and I clearly remember him drawing 
and go, pointing a gun at me. But let's go back to Joan's roadside assistance call, capturing the moments right before the shooting. Stop. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Oh my God. Did Raja, in fact, identify himself as law enforcement? And did Jones have any idea that Raja was an officer? The roadside assistance call is rather damning. Clearly, a police officer who's acting consistently with his duties, one of the first things they would do is clearly identify themselves, particularly if they're in plain clothes, particularly if they have no emergency equipment activated on their civilian vehicle that they're driving, as Raja was doing with this white cargo van. So we have an absence, and there should have been repeated identifications. Can you imagine being uh, stranded on the side of the road at 3 o'clock in the morning, how vulnerable that must be? Corey Jones, who is a young man with no criminal history whatsoever, complete law-abiding citizen. Nobody doubts for a second if Corey Jones believed that was a police officer given a lawful command that he would not have acquiesced. Okay. And is there a reason why you stopped here instead of pulling up? Because yeah. the guy the jumped. The guy jumped out. He jumped out his exactly while you were in the car. He jumped out. He jumped out and I immediately jumped out too. You were dressed exactly like this? Exactly. Nothing more, nothing less? Exactly. 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 exactly like this. And I had my holster, which was covered. Was your it was covered? You know, the reason why cop cars have all of the lights and the protect and serve and the numbers and the reason why, you know, cops wear these uniforms is to make it very clear to the public who they are to prevent this exact situation. Otherwise, someone who, you know, cuts you off in the middle of the night and approaches you with a gun is just some stranger. How would you know him as law enforcement? Corey Jones did absolutely nothing wrong. And in fact, he was a positive pillar of society. He was a musician. He was a family man. Corey family believes he went to his grave never knowing who this strange person was who was confronting him. And I see his whole body spin, and I saw like a flash, a silver flash of like a metallic flash come at me. And in my head, I immediately said, aim, aim. And I was like, aim. And I was like, and I just picked that front sight right in the center mass. And I just, I don't have visual. Florida officer Newman Raja shot and killed motorist Corey Jones after what he claimed was an armed confrontation. As questions rose about why Raja was so quick to pull the trigger, many wondered if race played a factor. You cannot get away from the elephant in the room that he was a young African-American man who had a permit to carry a gun. This is a person who committed a crime and should be held accountable regardless of the fact that he is a police officer. I don't believe based on the facts and circumstances that this was a racially motivated crime. But I do believe that Raj's implicit biases triggered a reaction within him that registered Jones as a deadly threat. And this is exactly why officers need to be better trained on how to identify their own implicit biases and how to remove them from their decision-making processes. Despite Raja's claims that this was self-defense, his version of events was contradicted by other evidence, particularly Jones' roadside assistance call. Raja was eventually charged with manslaughter by a culpable negligence and attempted first-degree murder for the rounds that missed Jones. That's how law enforcement officers are trained. It's about center of mass, neutralizing the threat. You are, you're not trained to kill, you're trained to neutralize the threat. Once that threat's been neutralized, you keep firing, you've got an intent other than dealing with the threat. An ordinary citizen would have been facing far more serious charges. He should have been charged with obstruction of justice for lying to investigators, but because Raja was an officer acting in the scope of his duty, I think that manslaughter by culpable negligence was the most appropriate charge to ensure Jones got justice in this case. Raja's defense team first tried to get the charges dropped by arguing that Florida's stand your ground law applies. The courts disagreed and the case moved forward. 
Florida's stand your ground law is definitely very interesting. It grants immunity to defendants to defend themselves with necessary, even lethal force. When they believe they are in imminent danger, there's no duty to retreat. Raja is trying to have it both ways. He's trying to say, and I was a cop, acting as a cop, I was on duty. But you know, if you don't think I was, then I'm a civilian and I have stand, Florida stand your ground to defend myself with. Well, Florida stand your ground doesn't say that you can create a hot mess that you never should have done in the first place. Raja's trial became a back and forth, with the prosecution arguing the defendant carelessly shot an innocent person to death. And that's a verdict finding him guilty as charged of being a reckless killer and for trying to murder Corey Jones. And tried to cover it up. There's a huge difference between trying to think about what happened and intentionally saying something <coughs> Don't get away with what you did. While the defense said Raja reasonably perceived a threat. It was a perfect storm that turned deadly. When Mr. Jones pointed that handgun, and Mr. Raja, in defending himself, fired his handgun. And that he didn't lie about what happened, but rather the trauma and chaos of the event caused him to misremember details. The stress of the incident can impact how they perceive and relate the incident. They don't always get everything right. Interestingly, during the trial, Raja chose not to testify, which is surprising considering we've seen defendants take the stand in self-defense cases. We should never be drawing any adverse inference simply because someone exercises their right not to testify. Nevertheless, if Raja and his attorneys felt that he had a plausible, legitimate story to tell about lawful police activity, then they should have felt comfortable telling that story. And something about Raja's story made them uncomfortable. As to count one, we find a defendant guilty of manslaughter while armed with a firearm. As to count two, we find a defendant guilty of attempted first degree murder as charged in the information. Newman Raja became the first Florida police officer in 30 years to be convicted for an on-duty shooting. Because of my background, I do give benefit of the doubt to the officers who have a very tough job on the street and need to survive every day. And I think juries believe that too. And I, I think without this audio of the roadside assistance call, we would have assumed he was telling us the truth. And I think he would have gotten off. Raja may have been found guilty, but what happens next for him? But since no amount of punishment can bring Corey back, no amount of punishment for killing him could be too much. Hi, I'm Dan Abrams. In the exploding legal and true crime genre, Law & Crime is the only network that has it all. Good evening and welcome. This is a complicated case. Don't really jump to conclusions. Welcome to Prime Crime Tonight, another day of drama between both sides. From multiple live trials daily to original and compelling programming, the Law & Crime Network is everywhere, and we invite you inside the jury box. This is Law & Crime. Think all court shows are the same? We're talking about your father. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Think again. Judge Caprio rules with common sense. I was having contractions. I was rushing to the hospital. Inspector Quinn, what does justice demand? Jail? <laughs> and compassion. I'm going to take the circumstances into consideration. The best court experience I've had. Clearly, Judge, he's been in a court before. Get caught in Providence. Newman Raja was convicted of manslaughter and attempted murder for the shooting death of Corey Jones on the side of a West Palm Beach freeway. Now it became a question of sentencing for the former police officer. Statements from family members further showed the complications of this story. No one was there to hold his hand, to comfort him, or to save his life. He was alone, but God is helping us do this. The person that we trusted to serve and protect did not. He hunted down an innocent man and killed him. 
he ruined the lives of Corey Jones's family as well as his own. And still, he shows not an ounce of remorse. Newman Raja is a disgrace to honorable members of law enforcement. Someone said that he embarrassed his family. No, he didn't. We're proud of him. Once again, I'm really sorry for Corey Jones' family lo family's loss, so I would like to apologize to the family. But I just don't feel this is right. It's politically motivated. I have my husband, a man who was faced with a split-second decision, something that neither you nor I nor most people in this room will thankfully have to face. I also know that the future of two innocent children linger in the lenience of this court. Their lives are forever changed, forever scarred. Raja was sentenced to 25 years in prison. 25 years is a tough, tough road. But I have to tell you, it's consistent with the evidence in this case. At the time of this taping, Raja has appealed his case. His lawyers are pushing several arguments, such as that Raja employed justifiable use of force as an officer, and the court failed to instruct the jury on Raja's attempts at making an arrest. Most people don't succeed on appeals anyway, um, but with Raja, his previous Stand Your Ground appeal did not succeed. So I'm not sure how he's going to prove justifiable use of force following everything we know to be true. All of these potential defenses that Raja may attempt to use in his appeal are fraught with peril for him. If you're going to say, I was trying to attempt an arrest, that requires facts. You can't claim you're making an arrest when we never heard it on the audio. I'm going to have to prove that I was acting as a police officer, and I haven't done that successfully at the trial level. I think the message here has been sent in the state of Florida that police officers will be held accountable for their actions when they use deadly force that cannot be explained. There's a lot at play in the Newman Raja story, but what's interesting to think about is that in this case, by making that roadside assistance call, Corey Jones caught his own killer. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Leave us your comments on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag Prime Crime. As always, thank you for joining us, and until next time, be safe.